So guys, how do you tell the difference between an ACL injury and a meniscal injury? If that's what you've come to find out, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So the first key thing to understanding the difference between these two injuries is to understand the anatomy. So let's start off by diving in to our 3D anatomy model. So let's start off with the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament. So obviously this is a ligament and we can see that with the anterior attachment of this ligament to the anterior tibia, its main role comes in preventing excessive anterior or forwards movement of the tibia on the femur. Therefore, when a patient has an ACL injury, one of the key symptoms that they're going to feel is instability or giving way because the ACL is unable to do that job of preventing that anterior tibial movement. We also know that the ACL has a really good blood supply and therefore you'll commonly find with these patients when they truly rupture their ACL, they will get a significant amount of swelling in the first five to 10 minutes following their injury. So how does the ACL get injured? Well, it's all linked to that ligament's job of trying to prevent too much anterior translation of the tibia on the femur. So a couple of ways that you'll see your patients getting injured. One is when they land from a jump and lose control, or also commonly from a valgus twist. And in both of these incidences, if that means that the tibia moves too far forwards, relative to the femur, it means that there's too much stress on that ligament, which means that it can rupture. Now, what we also know is that in a sporting environment, 70% of ACL injuries occur in a non-contact manner where the patient has no one around them when the injury happens. So make sure you listen out for that when you're listening to their story. Now, next over to the meniscus or the menisci, if you're talking about more than one of them. Now, as we can see on the screen, the meniscus is a cartilaginous crescent-shaped structure and we can see that these sit on the tibial plateau. We have one on the lateral side, the lateral meniscus, and one on the medial side, the medial meniscus. Now, the main role of this structure is in shock absorption, particularly downward or axial movement, and also rotational movement. And what we do know is that the meniscus has far less of a blood supply to the ACL. So in the majority of meniscal injuries, we actually don't expect that sudden onset of swelling that we may have seen with the ACL injuries. Now we do know that when the knee is in extension, about 45 to 50% of our body weight goes through the menisci. However, when our knee is in flexion, that figure raises to up to 80% and you can see particularly it's on the posterior surface of the meniscus that gets loaded when the knee is in flexion. That means that flexion is a much more vulnerable position for the meniscus compared to extension and therefore it's no surprise that the most common time that your patients will injure their meniscus is when they are twisting on a flexed knee. So listen out for that story in your patient's mechanism of injury. So what other differences can we find between these two injuries? Well, when it comes to reporting pain, for your ACL injuries, your patient will commonly report a bit of a nondescript global pain that seems to be more deep around the knee joint. However, when it comes to meniscal injuries, patients can be a lot more specific and we find that their pain is more concentrated around the joint line of the knee where the meniscus is located. And actually, it can be fairly consistent that the location of the tear itself is the place that the patient reports their pain. So we might come in as the clinician and palpate around that meniscus and we're seeing if it's particularly painful. And when we get to that painful point, ow, the patient will be able to locate the area of their pain and we see if that matches up to where they said earlier that might highlight to us where that meniscal injury has occurred. Now, another really important consideration is when our patient has locking at their knee. Now, locking is where a patient feels that they are unable to fully extend their knee, both actively and passively. And that can be because there's a meniscal tear which is effectively blocking that movement within the knee. Now, the key principle here is that not all patients with a meniscal tear do have true locking. However, 
If your patient does have true locking, then it really increases the likelihood that they do indeed have a meniscal tear. So look out for that one for your meniscal injuries. So what about our examination? How can we differentiate between these two injuries in our exam? Well, when it comes to our meniscal injuries in the past, we may have used things like McMurray's test or a Thessaly's test to try and diagnose that injury. However, we know now that actually these tests have less sensitivity and specificity than we previously thought. So for me, the key things are listening to that patient's story about that flexion position when they twisted their knee, and then I'm listening to where they have their pain. Is it indeed around that joint line of the knee? And then can I then palpate the joint line of the knee to see if I can reproduce that pain? Now, for your ACL testing, you may well use your anterior draw test and your Lachman's test, as you can see here. And if you want full explanations behind these tests, we have videos in the description below for you to check out. Now, final thought and a really important one. Remember, your patient may experience an ACL injury and a meniscal injury in the same mechanism. They can, of course, happen at the same time. So therefore, you might find that your patient does have that feeling of instability and giving way, and they had that sudden increase in swelling following their injury. And at the same time, they may even present with some locking, pain at the joint line, and pain when you palpate along the joint line. In which case, you may consider that they may have injured both at the same time. So reach out to a senior colleague, maybe even refer to an orthopedic consultant to see if they believe that an MRI scan is the right thing to do here to differentiate and diagnose both injuries. So guys, if you want more on this, we've got a brilliant webinar called Differential Diagnosis of the Knee. Link in the description below to our membership site where you can have access to this and all of our other brilliant knee webinars. Otherwise, if you've enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button, subscribing to the channel for all our best updates. Remember, we've got our Instagram channel at Clinical Physio and our website clinicalphysio.com for loads of brilliant resources for physiotherapists. My name's Khalid. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.